Hello, Linear Algebra students, Math 2331. What I'd like to do is prove this theorem that we used in class in the least squares section, and really will come into play later also in this semester. It says for any n by m matrix A, the kernel of a transpose A equals the kernel of A. And we're going to prove this using what's called a set theoretic proof. If you've had math reasoning or some other introduction to proofs course, then you will know what a set theoretic proof is and the structure. And if not, well, this is a wonderful time to see one for the first time, perhaps. Um, before I actually do the proof, so I can move this down, let me just make a remark about the sizes of these matrices and where these subspaces live. So you notice A, this is n by m. We have m columns. And so this says that the kernel of A sits inside of our m. Now, what about A transpose A? OK. Well, A transpose, the size is m by n. And then A is n by m. And so A transpose A, well, is a square matrix of size m by m. And in fact, this matrix is symmetric, as we've talked about in class. And so you see, once again, we have m columns. And so it's nice to at least verify that these two subspaces, the kernel of A transpose A and the kernel of A, sit inside of the same Rm. But more than that, we will prove they're actually equal. So. How does a set theoretic proof go? Well, in order to show two sets are equal, in this case, the sets are subspaces, I need to show that every vector in the kernel of A transpose A is also a vector in the kernel of A. And then I need to show that every vector in the kernel of A also is a vector in the kernel of A transpose A. And so there's really two parts to showing two sets are equal. First, we will show this direction. What does that mean? Well, what I want to do here is let some vector x be in the kernel of A. And then we want to show that this particular vector is in the kernel of A transpose A. And this will show one direction. And then I have a second part of the proof to do. OK, x is in the kernel of A. This means that ax equals 0. All right. All I need to do to get x in the kernel of A transpose A is just multiply both sides of this equation by A transpose. So then A transpose Ax equals A transpose times 0. But any matrix times the 0 vector is 0. And so look what we have here. We have A transpose A times X is zero. And this shows precisely, so thus, X is in the kernel of A transpose A. This was the um, easier direction, I feel. So now let's do the direction that takes a little bit more work, which is this one. It starts similar. We let X the n, the kernel of A transpose A. And we want to show x is in the kernel of A. Once we do this, we will have proved the theorem. We will have proved the kernel of A transpose A equals the kernel of A. OK. Well, similar to before, we have, we can unravel what it means to be in the kernel of a matrix. And it says that A transpose A x equals 0. It might seem like we are stuck because I want to conclude A x equals 0. That would say x is in the kernel of A. But I don't have that exactly. Well, let's just group some things. like this. So you see the way I have grouped it, we see AX is in, well, it's in the kernel of A transpose. 
as, well, the kernel of a transpose. This is the orthogonal complement of the image of A. What can we say? Well, in particular, AX is in the orthogonal complement of the image of A. That's because it's in the kernel of A transpose, but it's also in the image of A because everything in the image of A is of the form AX or some vector X. So AX is in this intersection of these two subspaces. Now we have to go back and think about orthogonal complements. Um, take any subspace V, any subspace of RN, or RM in this case. If you take V, intersect V, perp, the orthogonal complement, you get just the zero vector. So this says that AX must be the zero vector. And this means X is in the kernel of A. So this other direction took a little more work. It took more theory, but it was quite fun. And this completes this proof. We have shown the kernel of A transpose A is always equal to the kernel of A for any M by M matrix A. Now, I want to make a remark that really follows directly from this theorem, and I believe might be in the textbook exercises. One reason being is this matrix, A transpose A, will be a star player for us as we progress later in the semester, in particular with singular value decomposition. So let me just make a remark that follows immediately from the theorem. Remark. Well, it starts the same way for any n by m matrix A, but this time it says that the rank of A transpose A equals the rank of A. How could we see this? As I mentioned, it follows directly from the theorem. You note that A transpose A and A both have M columns. And while well, the kernels of the two matrices are the same, we just prove this. And so in particular, the nullity, which is the dimension of the kernel, well, this will also be the same. This is rank nullity, the rank of A transpose A, which is, well, it's M minus the nullity. You see, this will be the rank of A. So this follows really directly from the theorem we just proved and rank nullity. And so this is an important remark. As I mentioned, we will come back to this matrix A transpose A in the semester. So thank you very much, students. I hope you enjoyed this set theoretic proof.